All right, guys, so some of you asked for a specific video on actually taking the cover apart and going through the whole nine yards, so I figure why not? I'll grab my bike and we'll uh, take the cover off and go from there. So as you can see, I only have three bolts in this cover because when you're taking this thing off multiple times throughout the day when you're at a racetrack, you kind of get annoyed with having to take bolts apart, so I just left only three in it. I don't even run a gasket because, I don't know, I just don't don't need to. It's a waste of time to try and fiddle with it to me. But for those of you who might be running through mud or rain or dirt or snow, whatever it is, I'd probably run a gasket. But anyhow, we're just going to pull this apart. Take it all apart, nuts and bolts, everything's there. Okay, so now we're at... Uh, the gear, the, the pressure plate, you know, locking a screw, butterfly nut and all that. I gotta grab a couple tools here. Alright. So, I'm running red pads in here now. I'm gonna show you guys something real quick. You see that? There's just a little bit of motion there. That lets me know that my clutch is completely released and that it's, it's, the clutch is in, right? So you can see my clutch. Now, you see that clutch? There's just a little bit of play there. That's what you want right there. There's just the slightest bit of play. And when you pull your clutch in, you want your, your cover, your clutch pressure plate to have a little bit of play too. And, uh, oh. When your clutch isn't pulled all the way in, your arm needs to have a little bit of play as well. So you want your arm to have a little bit of play, you want your, your clutch handle to have a little bit of play, and this, this is just going to make sure that when your clutch is completely out, that all your pressure is going right here onto the pressure plate and into the clutch drive assembly. That's, that's what you want essentially. So I'm going to actually pull my clutch back in and uh, we'll just take this apart real quick. So. You're going to take off your locking screw. Uh, flip this over and put all my parts in here. Make a little tray out of it. Don't want to go losing stuff. And then right here. Now this is a lot easier if you have your clutch handle pulled in to, to get your flower nut off. See how easy that is? Watch how hard this is if I let it out. So you let your clutch out. Now watch. See that? I can't, I can't even move it. So for your own easy way of doing things, just go ahead and pull your clutch in. And then go ahead and turn this out. You can turn it out by hand even. It's really not that hard when your clutch is pulled in. Right? Let's go ahead and do that. Take your flower nut off. This is going to open up your pressure plate. Oh, that's neat. I haven't seen the inside of this one yet. That looks good. Okay. So now, you can see that we got all these clutch pads in here. and I believe someone asked about how to remove them pretty easily. Now, some clutch pads are pretty stuck, and some clutch pads are really loose. I prefer mine to be really loose because the reason being is when, you're, when your, your pressure plate here is pushing on your pad as it turns, the back side of your pad needs to be pushing up against the metal on the inside of this, right? It needs to push up against the metal to make two contacts. One here and one on your actual clutch uh, housing, assembly, whatever you want to call it, to, to drive forward. So that's two frictions instead of just one off of the pressure plate. But these, these pads are going to come out real easy. They're pretty broken. As you can see, they're just falling out. Uh, the black rubber pads, they are typically a tighter fit. Um, and and if, you, if you are pulling your pads apart, or trying to pull this basket apart, and it's just, uh, they're, they're struggling to come out, like they're real tight, um, you, you can take a knife or a file, whatever, and you can just grind the sides down. Um, 
so yeah you just you want to make sure they go in nice and easy like you'll see here these are literally just popping into place it takes nothing to put these in uh, as long as they're going in the correct way here now these like I mentioned are red pads um, I tried to make my own clutch pads and the thickness of them is actually a little shorter so that actually affects the bucking bar length when when you have less of a thick pad um, example these are probably quarter inch right so 0.25 uh, mil or inch um, which is actually six millimeter when you have a shorter pad thickness wise you actually have to run a longer bucking bar to make up for the lost uh, the lost stroke because when you have to run these closer your 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 this has to be closer to the pads which means your your flower nut has to be tighter so on and so forth now I'm gonna put this all back together and you're gonna see how I assemble it because remember our clutch is still pulled in so essentially this is loose it's not tight so we gotta go back to that point where it was loose right so <clears throat> I'm gonna we got all our pads in I'm gonna put this back together oh I'm already messing up what am I doing guys all right spring in that's first then pressure plate now flower nut just go ahead and tighten up your flower nut now when we're tightening this up remember remember before it was loose so I want you to go all the way tight we're not loose right now and you're just gonna back off until you're loose you see that right there that's loose right if you go one notch forward is it still loose no so we need that one notch back right there where it's loose and the way we're gonna tell that it's good is the clutch is pulled in you're just gonna lift her up and spin her is that spinning free if it is that's right where you want it you see how that's spinning nice and free watch what happens when we bring it one forward and it isn't loose see that not loose watch now it's still spinning free but did you see that it's got enough tension on it that it's actually pulling the drive gear into the the crankshaft gear and it's trying to move it so we want that just backed off just one because that's that's perfect right now the way you tell it's perfect is you're gonna lock this it still has this little bit of slop clutch arm still has a little bit of slop that's lost its slop now watch see it's turning it over now I have a hundred percent clutch engagement and it's turning the motor over that's what you want right there so anyhow I'm gonna pull my clutch in I'm gonna make sure that this is lined up correctly I don't know if you can see that very well and then I'm gonna make sure my clutch is still a little sloppy right around here still moves gonna just go back over it make sure this still spins looks like it still spins I'm gonna grab my locking pin well locking screw essentially and I'm gonna tighten it up as I mentioned before this is an M4 by a point seven zero it's a metric and then we're just gonna take our cover yep, a little grease on there Put our cover back on now like I said again I'm not running a gasket because I don't really care to this this bike doesn't see rain I don't take it out in the rain I know this is Oregon but I'll put it away and I won't ride it until it's a sunny day this this bike doesn't need to be rusting out on me this is my baby I got too much money invested in this thing to go take it out and destroy it on a rainy day so um, one thing I didn't mention is inside your housing there where your gears are just take a finger dab of grease not much bigger than the tip of your finger and run it on the inside of your gear on your big gear uh, maybe even put a little between your little one and your big one and then just run that through um, don't let it sling of course you don't want enough that it slings and gets on your clutch but you want enough that it keeps your your gears lubricated because you know these these are metal on metal they bring on heat um, and their their slack adjustments aren't correct 
Um, so that's just something to think about. You just want to run a little bit of a little bit of grease in there. Um, trying to tighten this up. And remember, we talked about the bucking bar. You want to make sure you're running grease in there too, because these are all moving parts, metal on metal, and uh, heat is your number one issue with wear in in an assembly with that's going to have metal on metal. But you guys get the idea here. Um, if you have any other questions on the issue on how to adjust this, um, just just let me know. I'll I'll go over one last thing real quick. So this is a this is a clutch basket. Now there's bearings in between here. Um, this is your gear, and anyhow, what we're looking for is a few different things. You can have slop this way, and you can have slop this way. Now, when you push this back and forth, you don't want to feel much movement, and when you pick it up back and like up and down motion, you don't want to feel a little movement. So this one's got a little movement now. The real test with a clutch basket is that if you push into it while holding the backer and you feel any grinding whatsoever to where it hangs up or sticks or anything, that's that's where you know these are bad. And this one isn't. So if you pull pull outward where, where this side is going this way and your gear is going this way, if you pull outward and you feel any hang up at all anywhere in the rotation that's when you know that it's also bad because your bearings are probably chewed up in here and they're fighting each other stumbling over each other essentially and uh, you know metal on metal grit whatever sand almost like that's gonna hang up. but as you can see this thing this thing's actually in really good shape so this this clutch is probably good for another I don't know, I could probably race on this thing, really. It's, it's in that good of shape. But I want to do one last thing um, real quick. i got to find the right Allen key for it. I think it's this one. Um, you can see right here my, uh, I think it's actually this size, my clutch arm. <coughs> oh, it's pulled in. Okay, to adjust this, you don't want you don't want your clutch pulled in. Remember, you want you want that loose like that. So what we're gonna do is, is we're just gonna adjust this just real quick, just so you can see how to do it. Now I'm running two of these. My other one's not even in the correct place right now, so it's probably be a, not even being useful. I don't even know if I technically need it. But I'm gonna pull my cable out. As you can see, I lock my cable in place just so I don't have it in the way. If this thing's out here like this and you're pedaling without uh, pants on or boots, you're gonna you're gonna get bit by your cable because these cable ends are pretty sharp. But so I loosen this up. I'm gonna loosen this one up too. We'll just bring it completely out of adjustment and then bring it back in. So I'm gonna loosen those by hand, both of them. We're gonna come up here to the handlebar, and I'm just gonna bring this back to zero. So we'll take that in. You can see the cable's all sorts of sloppy now. Take these out of a jaw. Ow! See, I just got bit. No fun. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this so you can see that that's loose. This is loose. Everything's loose. Now, I'm actually soaking up this much cable right here from the point there where that was until the point this was. So now with this staying loose, you don't want this too tight. Don't add any tension onto this. You want this to be a little loose, okay? So just push it like that with your finger, pull this tight like that, come up here, kinda make sure that's fairly tight, okay? So with, with no tension on anything, go ahead and tighten this up. So I'm gonna tighten it by finger, both sides. I run two just because it doesn't fray out your, uh, your cable nearly as bad if you just run one. All right, so just go ahead and tighten this up. 
Oh, going the wrong way. All right. Tighten it up. This takes a second. Gotta make sure it's, you know, getting tight. And put the tension on them. Remember, our clutch itself is already dealt with. It's good to go. So we're just going to tighten this up. Come on. It's probably darn near close. I like the Allen key because it makes the, the tight area easy to get into. When you're trying to use a straight blade screwdriver or something, you got to come up through the back side and it really makes it a pain in the butt to get to. Hopefully these videos aren't too long because this is taking me a while to do. Alright. And then I'm just going to sync this one up and tighten it by hand. I don't even need to tighten it all the way for right now. I don't think I'm going to need it. But it's just a good idea. And then uh, take your cable end, try and get the fray out. And then if you have to, just cut yourself some new zip ties. I like to run it like this with the zip ties holding it. Um, you know, one here, like one here. And it just keeps it out of the way, your ankle. When you get bit by this thing with your ankle, it ain't going to feel good. So now our clutch arm is loose, right? Make sure it's got a little bit of loose. You can see everything's loose, right? Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull your clutch in. Remember, you're just gonna lift it up. And you're just gonna feel it. It's rolling through nice and easy, right? Nothing's hanging up. Then, let your clutch out. Now I can feel this on the compression, but I'm pulling, and you can hear my motor turning over. Yeah, I can't even start this thing. It's got 210 PSI, but Anyhow, you, you get the idea. You pull your clutch in, nice and easy. So this is the key, right? Loose handle, loose this, and you know your lock, your, your flower nut is giving enough torque because it's turning the motor over. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I've been through this damn thing so many times that I'll be able to identify whatever it is that's not working right. But anyway guys, have, have a good one. Alright, so something I've heard I have to go over is say say you got your bike and you got your clutch pulled in, but you're trying to push it forward and it's dragging. You can feel it dragging. You're like, what in the world's going on? There's two things that it could be the issue. Number one, your flower nut on the inside of your clutch here could be too tight by one or two of those nodes, right? I think it's an eighth turn or a quarter turn, whatever it is. Go ahead and go in. Remember with your clutch pulled in, you just want to back that off one, re-tighten. Then go ahead and test. Does it roll smooth? If it does, then you fix your issue. The other issue is, is say you're rolling forward, you know you got your flower nut backed off enough, it rolls smooth. Well, at least, at least you believe it rolls smooth, but you pull your clutch in and it, it doesn't quite feel that way, right? Something you can do is you have a, an adjuster right here on your handlebar. You have an adjuster right here. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's right there, right? So that you got that one little 10 millimeter adjuster. So what you're going to do is that one's already adjusted out. So what I'm going to do is see that slack? You can soak up just a little bit of slack. You don't want it to the point it's tight. You want it still to have some slack, so just go until she like tightens up the slack, but not so much that you take all the slack out. You know, just just a little bit at a time. Pull your clutch in. See if she rolls through smooth. If she does, essentially what you've done when you tighten this up a little bit is it allows your clutch arm to just pull in just a little bit farther and release your pressure plate off of your clutch clutch assembly there, right? That's the one thing I missed and I wanted to mention, so just just remember that. That's that's how you adjust it. But always, absolutely always, have that just the slightest little bit of slop. Because that lets you know you're fully released. But anyhow guys, 
Don't forget that. That's really important.